So our agenda this morning is I'm going to say uh, a word to you, uh, just about some things I've been thinking about. We're going to talk about the change in grad challenge. And then we're going to give uh, Peter Booth a chance to speak if he would like, just around briefly. Yeah, briefly. stuff. And then answer questions. And I think we could probably, my guess is we could probably do all of that in 15, 20 minutes or so. Thumbs up, everybody. Sound good? All right, sweet. Okay, so here are some things that I've been thinking about. Um, one thing that I, uh, Peter, will you admit people while I'm talking, by the way? Yes, yep, I'm on that. Okay, so one thing that um, I just wanted to, to start off with is a thank you. And uh, I'm, I don't know, like somewhere like 16 years into school administration. And one thing I'm certain of, and you've probably heard me say this before, is that a school goes as a senior class goes. So when we have a senior class that's uh, <clears throat> like highly uh, community oriented, that really cares about what they're doing, you tend to have a pretty amazing school year. Um, and I think when you have a senior class that's either for one reason or another, a little disjointed or disconnected from itself or uh, something's happened where there's um, distrust between the school and the senior class, that, that, that tends to create a tough year and actually creates uh, a lasting difficult legacy because other students follow your modeling. And I just can't thank you enough for the way that you've conducted yourselves through last spring and through this fall. I mean, you've had to contend with uh, so many changes, so many um, kind of unanticipated plans. You know, last year, all of, I felt like all of the effort was like, oh, class of 2020, like this poor class of 2020 has to graduate in COVID and all of this and that. And I don't know if you felt that as the class of 2021, I felt it for the class of 2020, but in my heart, I was also like, this might, you know, actually be tougher on the class of 2021 in some ways, because you've been through five to six months of pandemic now. My guess is you've had your fill of it. Um, I certainly have. You're heading into uh, a fairly contentious, uh, or actually the most contentious presidential election I've ever seen in my lifetime. And people are stirred up and, and it's hard not to feel that, particularly if you are a person who's, uh, you know, highly, highly empathetic. Um, and I know that many of you are. But given all of that, you have, from my perspective, been incredibly cohesive as a group. You've been, uh, you know, the things that you value are things that I really admire. Um, the thing that I've kind of heard the most is, you know, the thing we feel like we're missing right now are those some of those social connections like even the connections with our teachers like it's just awkward in class or class is short or we get these stupid study blocks and we can't really socialize with our friends but you've kind of gone into this from my perspective with a sense of gratitude for you know i'm kind of glad to have the stuff that we have and i appreciate that having said that it's really important to me and i know it's important to peter i know it's important to carly that your senior year is a special year for you and that it honors the things that, um, that you want to do. And some of those things were like the special events, <clears throat> you know, like prom or uh, rally in the valley, or it's funny how those little traditions can, can anchor uh, a student's experience at times. Um, and I want you to know that I learned personally, I think I, we learned a lot from graduation last year. I went into graduation with this real fear that it was going to be awful. And it ended up being, the, in my opinion, the best graduation CVU has ever had. Um, being outdoors, being on the stage, we were able to be together. But what we focused on, what, like, what was the heart of what made that experience special? And uh, we're committed to doing that with you, not for you, but with you this year, like getting into what are the essence of some of those experiences that you want to have? And then how do we, how do we uh, not recreate it? but maybe capture it in some different ways that who knows, could be better. Could you could be like leading, leading the way for, for years and years to come. So you, you sit in a special position. Uh, it's not one you asked for. <laughs> it's not one I would have wanted you to be in, but it's the one we're in and we're going to figure it out together. So I just want to say that. I also want to just say that uh, I'm really committed to that social connection piece. You know, I mean, Brooke, I can, I see you on my screen right now. I'm thinking about bring change to mind. Like you, you, you know, you and your colleagues and bring change to mind. 
get the importance of that connectedness and where the health comes and resilience comes from connectedness. So, um, you know, we're going to, we're going to shift structures at school so that we're emphasizing that connectedness for you this year. And uh, it just is going to take us a couple of weeks as, as we get into the school year. And, and we've started off tight uh, and we're going to hopefully be able to loosen up throughout the year on some of those restrictions. But, you know, the important thing was to get started on the right foot. So having said all of that, I'm not sure how many of you watched my stellar webcast I sent out this week. I want you to know I recorded that thing like 25 times. It started off in room 160. I recorded six takes there. It didn't work. I did it at home at night in my tie with my dog in the background. I will send you those. They were like nine minutes long, really wordy and confusing. You should see it just for the outtakes. I have one outtake where I'm just swearing because I'm so <laughs> I couldn't get it. I'm not gonna share that one. Anyway, I got lost in what I was saying. Uh, so this year's grad challenge is going to be significantly different. And uh, the idea is we wanna, when you saw the video, we're, we're, we really wanna streamline it to minimize some of the uh, moving pieces like the annotated bib, uh, the community consultant piece, some of the, the research components of it and really get into the heart of what that grad challenge experience is. And really, it's, it's the whole project has always been about you taking initiative for your own learning and uh, through that, learning some important things about yourself, who you are, where you've been, and I think most importantly, what do you want to ground yourself in as you're going into the future? Um, <clears throat> so we are going to have a community exhibition and that's going to be probably in May, and we're going to invite you in. I really hope we can invite in the external community, your parents, guardians, people who are important to you, and get you to share an exhibition uh, reflecting on some prompts that we're going to be directing your way, probably more like later in, more towards the second quarter and second half of the year is where you'll be doing some significant work on it. Um, but as I mentioned, that project, that's still being designed, and we'd love your help in that. So I'm gonna shut up for a minute and I'll let Carly throw anything into what I missed, maybe some of the exciting things that you're thinking about, Carly, and, uh, and then we'll turn things over to Peter. All right, I was trying to help Nick get in. He said the passcode's not working for him. I don't know, he's trying to get in. <laughs> okay. um, anyway, I, yeah, I am super excited about Grad Challenge. I don't know. I mean, Adam sort of mentioned it, that this thinking, the experience that we're planning for you all isn't new to us, even though we had to make the shift a little bit quicker than we anticipated. There's been a group of um, adults in the building thinking about this shift and how to make Grad Challenge better. Um, so I hope that is calming in some ways, knowing that, yes, we have some stuff to figure out quickly now, but it's not all brand new thinking. Um, and the other piece is that I haven't heard from any of you yet about joining in on the design team. So I'm really hoping that some of you are interested. And even if it's just sending me an email that's like, hey, have you thought about trying to incorporate this? Or I would really hope that uh, my experience includes whatever. Um, if you send that email alone, that would be awesome. If you want to also join in a design team with some adults in the building, that would be great as well. So um, know that we really do want to help make it meaningful and worthwhile for you all uh, while keeping the heart of Grad Challenge alive, like Adam said. Still no Nick. I don't know where Nick is. So uh, why don't we turn it over to Booth and then we'll move to questions that people have. Uh, and Will, uh, yes, lots of pressure, but we, as Peter said, we trust you. I didn't say I trust Will, I said I have faith in him. There's a, oh, good point, okay. Quite discrepancy there. I love Will, I'm not sure I trust him all the time. Um, <laughs> me too. Um, so, so this year is a little bit unique and um, so I'm, so just to back up for a second. So I am the senior class council advisor and senior class council is sort of the group that is in charge of, uh, all the, uh, all the non-academic stuff that happens within a class. So, um, t-shirts, winter carnival, trike race signups, uh, prom, putting on eighth grade dance as a fundraiser, 
uh, winter ball, all those things come out of senior class council. And so honestly, to be really honest, like if we go back five years, it was sort of the same thing. Like every year was like, oh, we're juniors this year. We need to organize prom. How does that happen? And then sort of this is called the DJ, do these certain things and it just kind of happens and it gets taken care of. But last year with last year's senior class, and then I think even more so with, with you guys, um, it's it, sort of everything's up in the air. And so it, it actually is a, a space where creativity is, it's a, it's a place to be creative and a place where creativity is needed. Um, I think that being totally transparent with you, if I were a betting man, which I'm not, because I lose money when I bet, um, I think probably prom is not gonna be able to happen this year. And it, like, just like it didn't happen last year, I think probably winter ball is not gonna happen this year, realistically. Um, and when I've been talking to seniors, both kids were already in class council and just kids in my classes and stuff. One of the biggest um, sort of things on kids' mind is I go to class, I see the kids in my class. If there aren't friends in your class, you don't see your friends at all because as soon as class is over, you have to leave the building um, and you can't hang out in four corners. And so what people are really wanting is a way to get together, obviously safely, um, but in a relaxed sort of social environment. And so in meeting with some of the kids who've been doing class council for all four years of high school, um, they had come up with some ideas, a couple of which I think are really cool. Um, but we really need people's uh, create creative ideas and thoughts on, on what are some things we could do that could be get togethers, um, not, as replace, not as a replacement for prom, but sort of acknowledge or, or a replacement for winter ball or whatever events normally happen. Not, not to replace those things, but to sort of try to fulfill some of the elements of that. Some of the elements I think of prom are um, being with friends, being dressed up, being out without your parents. I think those are all kind of key elements. And so one thing we've talked about, and this is, we literally, literally came up with the idea two days ago. So this is not like a done deal, but an idea was what if we hiked up, what if we hiked up Mount Philo at night and had a DJ with lights and such on the Mount Philo road, like halfway up Mount Philo. So music was all up and down Mount Philo. And then up at the top at Mount Philo, if we went and got sponsors and had um, something up at the, some sort of some sort of culminating thing up at the top of Mount Philo for the senior class, because it's going to be hard for you guys to be together. And I think that um, as you get closer to April, May, you're going to, I predict, begin to get a sense of, oh, wow, in two months, I'm not going to see these folks again and sort of. I, I want to have some time as a group to be in a group together. So that's kind of where the thinking is. Um, and class council meets twice a week. We meet on Mondays before school at 8.30 for cohort one kids. And then cohort two kids, we meet Thursday uh, after school at 2.50. Um, so those are the two times, and if neither of those times work for you, or if you don't have transportation to work around that, some kids uh, phone in through Google Meet or Zoom or just FaceTime, um, and you can get involved that way. But I do think that rather than class council just being, um, just being, do the prom work, do the winter ball work, raise some money, get a class gift. It, there's really room for creativity and people with sort of good brains and, and good ideas for how to create community um, are needed. So that's my pitch for class council. Question, how much did I miss of it? Zoe, I'll fill you in. I'll fill you in, Zoe. Zoe's in class council, one of our many class council people. I will fill you in, Zoe. Okay. Awesome, so uh, thanks, Peter, and thanks, Carly. And poor, I guess Nick never made it in, huh? You might have one of our new uh, Chromebooks that are, is struggling a bit. Um, that's why yeah, I was... sorry, he did want me to apologize. He's still not, it's not working for him, so. Yeah, that's all right. Um, may, he, he may send a note out later. Uh, are there questions that folks have before we, so we're at 12.50. Um, what, uh, what do people wanna know? Are we going to have like 
advances outside now or something? Is that going to be a thing? So I think the question is, are we going to have dances outside? Uh, I think we, Zoe, I think the thing I'd say is that we don't know for sure, but the, uh, if that's exciting to the class, we'll find a way to make it work. I mean, we could have like, you know, I, I think a good example is that, um, the senior picnic that we did before graduation last year, we were able to get the entire class in. It actually ended up being a pretty cool experience. Who knows? Maybe we make like four bonfires on campus and have, <laughs> you know, people around those bonfires dressed up or, you know, I mean, we can be, we, we can be creative. So. We'll try to get to that experience. Clearly, if something happens nationally where we could have problem, we'd do it in a heartbeat. Um, <clears throat> but we'll try to find a way to, uh, again, kind of recreate that experience, I think, as best we can. What questions does anybody have about uh, specifically grad challenge, which I think, knowing from my classes, some kids have kind of anxiety around the kind of not knowing piece. So are there questions around that? Adam, I kind of had a separate question when I'm doing advisory I was trying to do the quiz um it kind of like it logged me out because I was like almost done I guess I took too long and the thing like logged me out of the when I was in the middle of still trying to do it like I was halfway done and it just like I didn't know there was a time limit on it so do I need to redo the whole thing over again uh let me let me check it out uh I will see I think you will Zoe one of my advisees had the same problem he he was quite angry that he had to do it a second time yeah, I was like, I got really annoyed because I was like almost done to the thing. And I was like, I don't want to redo this again. It took me a while to figure out how to answer these questions on my own. And I'm just like, I don't want to do this again. <laughs> but I guess I might have to. And that's just going to frustrate me that I have to do it all over again. Well, maybe depending on your advisor. Well, let's let's talk about it after because there's a whole bunch of people here. I'll hang out after the meeting and we can, we can chat right. through. I have a question. Yep. Um... Is it okay if our grad challenge, I feel like in the past they've been like about helping people or like trying to get out into the community, but is it okay if we do one that's like not really like that this year? Cause I feel like my, what I was gonna do, like mm. I couldn't do it over the summer because of Corona, but mm. is it okay if they're not, I don't know, if they like only benefit <laughs> like myself? <laughs> Carly, do you want to address that one? Yeah, so absolutely. That's the main or one of the reasons why we needed to make the change this year, because you're not alone in not being able to make it work this year and do something in the community. A lot of experiences are limited this year. So the goal, as opposed to you doing something like you said, in the community or for other people is definitely to uh, focus more on the reflection and thinking about who you are as a learner. We don't want to lose that community connection. And that's why we are going to work really hard to um, bring the community in to hear some reflections and also to think about how we might make connections remotely. And some ideas we have are, you know, practicing some kind of interview experience with a community member or to have um, somebody in the community who knows you well share some things about you with as part of your reflection process. So don't worry that you aren't able to make the community connection happen on your own. We're expecting that. That's the main reason for the shifts that we're making and we are gonna figure out ways to um, still keep that connection. Does that help? Um, I have a question. Um, what exactly is the final product going to look like? Is it just a slideshow of like about me and my interests or what, like, yeah, what is it going to look like? We're anticipating that some people might choose that route and have that be the, what their presentation looks like. Ideally, we'd like to be able to allow for other more creative options as well. So creating some kind of video or um, another means of sharing your story. Uh, but that is one possibility. And I see Peter's hand up. I don't know if you wanted to add, Peter. Yeah, I would. Um, I, I think that I watched the, the video that Adam sent out. And in that video, he had just a small piece um, where he was talking about kind of, sort of saying, if I had to do this, here are some things. And he came across when he was going through some stuff from his childhood, he came across a picture he had drawn in, I think, second grade. And he's like, oh, my God, I totally forgot that I even had this thing. And so it was 
the idea really is just to sort of like, re I think, Carly, correct me, to really kind of explicitly pause right now at the age of 17 or 18 and think about who you are right now. Like your high school graduation is very much an inflection point where your childhood, whatever that looked like, is sort of coming to a close in the beginning of your adulthood, even though you aren't really adults yet, but the next piece is, is growing from this point forward. And so I think the idea is to pause and really, in a, in a meaningful way, really think about what formative things happened in your childhood who kind of made you who you are today and what do you feel like your trajectory and, and what's next for you, I think is the idea behind it. And Carly and Adam jump in. That's what I took away from what, what, what Adam had in his video, which I really recommend you um, mm -hmm. look at. Um, I, I think I'll just jump into that, Brooke, too. And uh, Brooke, I think maybe you've done a bunch of your grad challenge hours already. So if you want to, yeah, that was the other on, question. Yeah, if you want to reflect on that experience or do a traditional grad challenge presentation, you're certainly we would encourage you to do that. That's absolutely fine. Um, you know, the other thing I would say is like, it's not just about your interest too. Like, but we also know people have a variety, you know, a varying level of comfort with what they want to share about themselves and you should have the power to share what you want. I, I would encourage folks to go to depth, right? Like if you want this thing to be meaningful, really do some of that reflection uh, about, I guess I would call them like watershed moments in your life or like some of your values, where they come from, who are the important people to you? What are some things you want to experience in your future? Those kinds of things. Uh, <clears throat> but hopefully we can get to a point too where you get some say in terms of who's your audience, right? Because you want to be thoughtful about I don't just share my story with anyone. Actually, I'm probably a bad example of that because uh, I'm a terrible example of that because I, I talk too much. And anyway, uh, but um, uh, where was I going? Um, yeah, but you should have some you should have some control over that. And if you wanted to have a smaller group, and be like, yeah, there's some experiences I want to I want to share, but I don't feel comfortable sharing it with just sort of like a random community at large. And we want to give you that power too. So there there needs to be autonomy. You you're by the time you're doing this. I mean, a lot of you are technically adults. Like this is like, um, we're gonna put you in the experience and ask you to make what you can of it. Without stressing you out. Too much. I just wanted to add too that last year there were some students who ended up going kind of down a similar path to this because their projects got were supposed to happen towards the end of the school year, and so they weren't able to finish their their traditional grad ch challenge project plans. And the students who reflected thoughtfully and shared some of that in their presentation had some pretty powerful experiences and got some feedback from adults and advisors um, that they maybe wouldn't have. So I. Um, I don't want you to think this is like the watered down version. I think it actually could be an even better version than what we've been doing. And just to be truth, I mean, to be really truthful, and this is gonna sound a little bit harsh, Grad Challenge has been an important tradition. It's also been around, it, my, my senior year in high school was the first year we did Grad Challenge for the entire class. And I think there are elements of it that are a little dusty for lack of a better word. And you know, one of the things that we've been trying to work on in the last few years is how do we make this relevant? Um, and that's something that we hope to discover with you again, with you this year, not putting all the pressure on you to will, but uh, that, that it can be a co-created experience. All right, so I'm gonna hang out. Uh, Carly and Peter may wanna hang out or not. Um, thank you so much for being here today. We've recorded this, so hopefully I can, uh, uh, share this out later um, and uh, thanks for being here if you need anything nowhere around have a great day